Hi YouTube and welcome to Danielle's Censure Diaries. I am Danielle and I apologize in advance for the overdramatic um, thumbnail picture. <laughs> I didn't really know what to put for this one. Um, all I can think about is when I think speech therapy and the need for it for denture wares, I immediately think about the story where um, I was trying to update information um, with a automated system on the phone and I was not wearing my dentures yet for the day. I was like dentureless and as I was trying to speak and say a long serial number, I kept getting F and S mixed up with the automation so she would go to read it back and then it would be wrong and I'd have to do it like 10 times over. Finally I just hung up and put my dentures in, came back and set it and it still messed up I think once or twice and finally I was just put through to a person but anyways neither here nor there hopefully you guys laugh but um, it made me want to look more into speech therapy specifically so as I'm researching I'm gonna have you guys just kind of listen in to what I find so I looked up specifically for a lisp how many speech therapy sessions do you need for a lisp it says this should cover 10 sessions which for most people is enough to resolve a frontal or lateral lisp and amplify your confidence if you have questions about lisp therapy please do not hesitate to contact us for an initial consultation um let's see how long does speech therapy take for adults? If you are participating in speech therapy to improve your clarity of speech, fluency, voice, or public speaking skills, you can expect to see results within one to three months. Individual goals may vary, and you can continue speech exercise sessions to meet your specific needs. And let's see. That first one was with www.torontospeechtherapy.com. This last one I just now read is from www.openlines.com. Let's see. Is it too late for speech therapy? No age is too old for speech therapy, and it is never too late to start working toward meeting your communication goals. When should you seek a speech therapist for a lisp? Oh, this one is um, referring to children and how a child is talking, so we're going to actually skip that one. Does insurance cover speech therapy for a lisp? It says most insurance companies exclude developmental or chronic disorders for instance, when a child has a speech delay, lisp, or another type of articulation disorder, then their therapy may not be a covered benefit or the ben coverage may be limited. And that is from www.las, oh, laspeechtherapysolutions.com. What, what are the four types of lisp? There are four types of lisp. A frontal lisp. This occurs when you push your tongue too far forward, making a th sound when trying to use words with s or z in them. A lateral lisp. Extra air slides over your tongue when making s and z sounds, making it sound like there is excess saliva. A palatal lisp and dental lisp. Um, for those of you who may not have any insurance or you're in between or it doesn't cover for you, how much does speech therapy cost per session? The exact cost of speech therapy can vary. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, that was good old web, webmd.com for the four types of lisps. This one is... ConnectedSpeechPathology.com 
Um, the exact cost of speech therapy can vary, but a speech language evaluation typically costs $150 to $400, and a half hour therapy session may cost $65 to $175. So I wouldn't say it's cheap but comparatively it's fairly inexpensive from what I'm seeing. So if you wanted to do at least a handful of sessions, I would say having that prearranged, if I were to go back in time and if finance is permitted, I would have had those pre-scheduled and lined up for at least maybe three sessions. Um, about a month or two after my e-day, you want to give yourself time to work through the soreness, the stitches, the healing, the swelling. Wait until the swelling goes down to give yourself a fair chance. But I would recommend seeking speech therapy at some point right after your denture e-day or denture installation. Um, it's something I think all of us could benefit from. For me personally, I just was very stubborn and headstrong. I didn't even think to go to speech therapy. But the more I think about it, the more it would make sense that regardless, we have a lisp, whether it's because of our own biological teeth or denture, it would make sense that either way we could still be treated with speech therapy, I would think. But um, anyway, and then there's a whole bunch of resources for um, kids for their speech therapy. I'm sorry. Um, what is the success rate of speech therapy? In one study, 70% of preschool kids, darn it, <laughs> um, with language skills, or language issues who went through speech therapy showed imp improvement in language skills. And that is at carolinapeds.com, um, which of course it's looking at preschoolers. So I imagine for adults it may be higher or lower. I suppose, depending lower, because we, depending on how long we've had the speech issues, we may be more set in our ways. Then again, because we're older and we actually understand the treatment and what it's for, we may be able to actually really fully dedicate ourselves to working at it and not being as frustrated maybe as a preschooler who doesn't understand what's happening would be. Um... Let's see, the cons to speech therapy, it's talking about missing class. So in, in our case, it would be missing work for adults. Um, what would you say? How do you treat LISP? Is a LISP a disability? Does speech therapy always work? Okay. So is it effective? Several studies show speech therapy is an effective method for helping children and adults develop their communication skills. One study of over 700 children with speech or language difficulties show that speech therapy had a significant positive effect. And that's um, medicalnewstoday.com. That's really morbid. Um, a question that came up here on good old Google is, what is the most challenging type of speech? I thought it was going to say most difficult type of speech as in, I don't know, um, maybe different uh, accents, like a Spanish accent or something along those lines, or even the English language, because we have just so many complicated things going on. Um, but no, it went the other way and said the most difficult speech, the eulogy. 
that's not what I was <laughs> sorry it's funny it's not funny um, what exercises do speech therapists do speech therapists can provide personalized exercises focused on helping individuals recover their speech production skills um, the 10 best speech therapy exercises Do, 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 do. Um, I don't want my free book. I don't want a free book. It says tongue in and out. Stick the tongue out as far as possible and hold it for two seconds, then pull it back in. Hold for two seconds, then repeat. This helps train the tongue to move in coordinated patterns, which will help improve speech production. The second one is side to side tongue movements. For this speech therapy exercise, open the mouth and move the tongue to touch the right corner of your mouth, hold for 10 seconds, then touch the left corner of the mouth, hold for two seconds and repeat. The third one is up and down tongue movement. Open the mouth, stick, the, stick out the tongue, then reach the tongue up towards the nose, hold for two seconds, then reach down toward the chin, Hold for two seconds and repeat. Number four, smiles. The act of smiling involves many facial muscles. As such, smiling is a simple speech therapy exercise that can improve oral motor skills. Practice smiling in front of a mirror. Smile for two seconds, then relax and repeat. Following a neurological injury, such as a stroke, many individuals may have trouble moving one side of their face. While practicing smiling in the mirror, try to make the smile as symmetric as possible. Five, lip puckers. Start with the mouth relaxed, then pucker the lips together as if kissing. Holding this position for two seconds, relax for two seconds and repeat. Sorry. For an extra challenge in motor precision and control, practice puckering as slowly as possible. After practicing the previous speech therapy exercises focused on motor skills, individuals may be ready to practice the following exercises involving ver verbalization. If unable to speak at all, Individuals may benefit from visualizing themselves practicing verbal exercises to begin to promote brain adaptation and rewiring. Six, consonant and vowel pairing repetition. By, start by writing down which consonants are difficult to speak. Then, one at a time, pair each of these consonants with each of the five vowels, A, E, I, O, U. For example, those who have the trouble with the R sound can practice saying ra, re, ri, ro, ru. Repeat repetitively. Actually, that made me think of Scooby Doo. Rare, raggy. <laughs> For an extra challenge, try this with all of the consonants. Seven, sentence production. Individuals with neurologically based coordination disorders such as apraxia of speech have no trouble with the cognitive components of language production. However, their ability to move the lips and tongue is impaired. Therefore, reading aloud can provide those with apraxia of speech an opportunity to practice speaking. While this is also an excellent exercise for individuals with aphasia, it may be very frustrating at the beginning stages of recovery. Start by practicing only a sentence or two for short periods of time. Then increase the number of sentences or time spent practicing for further challenge. So in my previous video this week, I mentioned starting with reading small children's books, nursery rhymes, poems, and eventually get to the point where maybe if you're one who... Um, you read documents on an email as part of your work at your office. Read the emails out loud if you're in your own office. Obviously, if you're in a cubicle, it might be a little more difficult because others can hear you. 
Um, but otherwise, if you like to go to bed at night and read to yourself, um, read out loud instead. And then that way you can kind of progress and maybe start with reading one paragraph at a time. Then it's a page. Then it's a few pages. Then it's a chapter. Then you can read the whole book out loud if you wanted to. And really work on enunciating. And even if you have to repeat it a few times, go ahead. Otherwise, what's really nice about reading an entire book out loud is that it's for your entertainment. So give yourself some grace and enjoy the reading as well. Don't just focus on, I didn't say it right or anything like that. And then phonological processing. Phonology. Phonology. Okay. Phonology refers to the study of speech sound patterns. Speech therapy exercises that focus on phonology can also be beneficial for helping individuals improve their speech production skills. For this exercise, ask a family member or caregiver to state various words. Then guess how many syllables are in each word they say. Family members or caregiver should always give feedback as to whether the answer was correct or incorrect. The feedback is an essential part of what makes this exercise therapeutic. To guess how many syllables? If anyone has done that one, please let me know. Um, I don't understand how guessing how many syllables would be helpful. I could see when someone says um, Worcestershire sauce, like that would be an interesting word for someone to say to me and then I try and say the same thing back. Um, but at that rate, you could almost do the same thing with Google. Going to Google, um, Googling any word and then having, and then hit that speaker button so that it says the word out loud, but I still wouldn't understand the benefit of guessing syllables. So again, if anyone has the answer, please drop it in the comments for me. Number nine, word games. Playing word games can be a great way to integrate practicing speech therapy exercises into a fun, engaging activity. Although not all word games require verbalizing words, individuals can choose to simply work on the cognitive I'm so sorry. Components of language speak language or adapt the game to include speaking. For example, games such as Boggle, Scrabble, or Bananagrams involve cognitive language skills such as word finding and memory. Rather than simply creating words during these games, individuals should choose to also to state each word made to practice speech production as well. So that's a good one. Play Scrabble and whatever word you or the other person comes up with, saying it out loud. Games like Pictionary, 20 Questions, or Go Fish require individuals to speak throughout the game. This can be challenging initially, but it is an excellent way to make practicing speech therapy exercises more fun. For those looking for an independent activity, such games such as word searches or crossword puzzles can also be effective options to work on language skills. That's amazing. I wouldn't have thought of that. 10. Speech therapy exercise apps. While the exercises above are a great place to start, they aren't tailored to an individual's unique needs. Certain speech therapy exercise apps can adapt to provide exercises appropriate for one's current abilities and challenges so that individuals can in continue to improve. Guys, go to your app store on your phone and download something and drop them in the comments. Help your other support group people. Otherwise, I'm going to make a point to look at that and I'll drop some too in the next video. That's amazing. If you recommend any, drop them here and I will look into them for another video. I wouldn't have thought of that. For example, the CT speech and cognitive therapy app can assess an individual's problem areas and choose which exercises out of the hundreds built into the app 
would be most beneficial to promote improvement. While nothing can replace the value of an in-person individualized speech therapy, the CT speech app was designed by speech language pathologists to provide a better option for individuals to continue working on their speech and language skills at home. And this is all from the flintrehab.com. Another one I just thought of actually would be, and I think this would be a really fun one, especially if like you're healing at home and say everyone else goes to work, school, you live by yourself would be probably the ideal one. I would love to turn on a movie, mute it, turn on um, subtitles, and if it's a movie you're really familiar with, like me watching Harry Potter, you read the subtitles and say the lines out loud. <laughs> I feel like would be another great one too. Um, just to have fun with it, watch a movie, pass time, um, a little further into healing, not like brand new, like the day of, but like a week or so. I think that would be really fun. But um, anyways, if you guys do look up and find any good apps for speech therapy, please drop them down below. I will be doing my own homework and I want to look into it myself because that sounds like a great way to not replace the need for speech therapy, but at least get some exercises under your belt so that you can assess for yourself. Do you really need to pay for speech therapy? Is it something you can do at home from for yourself? Um, or, like I said, take that next step and get speech therapy because that is a wonderful resource that seems to um, be very important to some individuals here in the support group is how do I speak and not worry about a lisp or my dentures falling out, things like that. So, anyways, drop them in the comments. If you like videos like this one, please support it by hitting the thumbs up button. And if you'd like to see more videos from in the future, please hit subscribe and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.